continue from the previous video, we are going to find out the basis for a vector space using the row operations. So you have to find the basis for the subspace of R5, which means that the 5 dimensional space spanned by the vectors V1, V2, V3, and V4. Because in the previous examples, we have been given a matrix. Now you have been given a set of vectors. So what are you going to do is you are going to put them into a matrix form, V1, V2, V3, and V4 horizontally because they are the row vectors and you're going to reduce them into the row action form. So what are you going to do is to find out the row space for this, the basis for the row space of this matrix. So based on inspection, this is the leading one entry and this is the leading one entry and this is the leading one entry. So the, the first row, second row and third rows. And I'm going to write it in this way, W1, W2, W3 corresponding to the three leading one row vectors here. So these vectors form a basis for the row space here and as well as the basis for the row space of this. So we say that there are the basis for the subspace of the R5 spanned by V1, V2, V3 and V4. So the next basis is to find out the basis formed from row and column vectors of a matrix. In this example, in the fifth aspects here, the basis that we found is actually the reduced form which do not consist of the original row vectors here. So in this six aspect, we are going to find out the basis which consists the entire row vectors, the original vectors here. So how are you going to do this? So using the previous matrix as an example, we have to find the basis for the row space consisting entirely of row vectors from A. We don't want the reduced form. We want the original row vectors. So we can use the analogy from the column space idea because remember from the column space when you want to find out the basis for the column space of the original matrix A you just need to look at the corresponding pivot column from the reduced matrix form. So what are we going to do is we are going to transform the A into a transpose matrix here which means that the row vectors or the row space here will become the column vector and the column space. Now the row space of the original matrix is becoming the column space of A transpose. So we'll continue with the same step. You have to use the row operation to reduce into the row action form. Then you have to identify which columns is the leading one or the pivot columns. Here I can see that the first column, the second column and the fourth columns there are the pivot columns. So the corresponding column vectors in AT form the basis for the column space of ATR, the first, the second and the fourth. But remember, these column vectors belongs to the column space of A transpose. When you transpose it back to the row vectors, so the column vector will become the row vector. The column space here will become the row space. So transposing it will give you the basis that form the row vector of A, which is R1, R2, and R4, similar with the original row vector here, V1, V2, and V4. So this is how are you going to find out the basis for the matrix the basis for the row space of a matrix which consists the original row vectors from A using the analogy of the column space idea. The last aspect is to find out the basis and linear combinations. So you have been asked to find the subset of the vectors V1, V2, V3 and V4, V5 that forms a basis for the same for the space spanned by these vectors. So the first step that you're going to do is you form a matrix of A whose columns are the vectors. So this is the V1, V2, V3, V4 and V5 here. The second step is to reduce the matrix A to reduce row action form and the third step is to identify the columns of R that contains the leading ones here. The first column, the third, second column and the fourth columns here. So these first, second and fourth columns are the basis for the column space of R. Then we have to identify the columns of A that corresponding to leading one because we want to find out the columns, the basis for the column space of the original matrix A here, which is the first, the second and the fourth based on the reduced matrix form. So we have the V1, V2 and V4. So these V1, V2 and V4 are the basis for the 
space spent by these factors a v1 until v5 here. The next step is to express each vector not in the basis as a linear combination of the basis factors. So you have based on the previous solutions here, you have identified that v1, v2, v4 or the in the reduced form w1, w2, w4 are the independent factors because they are the basis for the column space. So by inspection, we know that the third column vectors and the fifth column vectors here, they are not the independent basis or the column vectors, which means that you can express it in the form of w1, w2 and w4. By inspections, I know that w3 is the combinations of 2, w1 minus w2 and w5 is actually the fifth column is a combination of the first, second and the fourth columns. And the last step is to replace the column vectors of R with the A because these vectors is corresponding to the column vector V3 here and so on for the rest. And what if you have difficulty in finding out the dependency equations? So if you couldn't detect what should be the combinations of these bases here, how are you going to do it? What are you going to do? So remember the testing of linear combinations where you can use the testing of linear combinations to figure out what should be the scalar constant in front of the bases here.